So esterification is a pretty important reaction in organic chemistry and in biochemistry. So let's take a look at what it is. So an ester is a group that looks like this. That's an ester. And it kind of looks similar to something called a carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid looks like this. And an ester can actually be made from a carboxylic acid with also the addition of an alcohol. And this process is actually also going to get us out some water. And this process is reversible, so we can break down an ester into its individual components again. So if you're going this way, this is called esterification. We're making an ester. And if we're going this way, this is called saponification. And the reason why is this is how they make some kinds of soap. So it's saponification, soap making. Um, but let's see what the mechanism for this is like. You can do this in an acidic or in a basic environment, so we're going to look at both ways. If we're looking at an acidic environment, everything's going to be protonated, nothing's going to be charged, and if we have this alcohol and this carboxylic acid, we're going to start with a nucleophilic attack from this oxygen. It's going to attack this carbon, and this carbon is partial positive, and these electrons in the double bond from one of the bonds in the double bond are going to go to the oxygen. Whenever you attack a carbonyl group or the C the double bonded to an O, that's what you want to do. You want to displace one of those double bond electrons, or one of those double bond electron pairs, excuse me. Okay, so you get this minus charge on the oxygen. It had two lone pairs before. Now it has three. This is not drawing for me today. We have two over here and three over there. And we get this funny looking intermediate with a plus. So we want to get this group out and we want to keep this group in. So how do we make the OH a good leaving group? Well, we can protonate it. So we can take this oxygen and grab this hydrogen and these electrons can go back to this one. Sometimes you'll see this in two steps. So maybe like another one of the alcohol molecules or a water or something will take the proton from that OH and then it will, I mean, not the OH, from the alcohol oxygen and it will give it to the OH. So once we have this, we're all set up to kick out our OH group. Because this is plus now and we're going to kick it out and it's going to come out as water. And then we get our product. And our product looks like that. And we have water. So that's how to make an ester in a, an acidic or a protonated environment. And when we do hydrolysis or saponification of this ester, it's basically going to be backwards. So now we're going the other way around. So we can actually add in this water this way and kick out the double bond. I'm going to stop drawing all the electrons, but we know it's the electrons that are moving. So we have this O minus and this OH2 plus. So we're starting to see a pattern. It's basically the same kind of thing. And we're going to steal this hydrogen or pass it to something else and then steal it. Now our leaving group is all ready to leave and we can go ahead and kick it out.
and we have a carboxylic acid, and we have an alcohol. And our water disappeared into the reaction. So that's saponification in an acidic environment. So now we're going to look at what happens when we're basic. So we're going to use the same reactants, except only this time we have some OH- in the mix. And this OH- is going to come and deprotonate this alcohol. Sometimes you might see the alcohol deprotonated from the beginning as like an alkoxide ion, but this is going to happen. And now you have this really good strong nucleophile that's going to come in here and displace this double bond. So now we kind of already have this set up. And then the, ni the nice thing about the leaving group is that in a basic environment, we're okay with OH minuses. So we can just make this leave and we're regenerating our catalyst. I forgot an arrow. Wow. Okay. Now, now it's right. So now we have the ester and we have our OH minus. And it might look like this OH is a catalyst because we had it in the beginning, we used it, and then we got it back, right? But this OH minus, this actually went on to become H2O. And that H2O didn't really react anymore, did it? So we actually, we have that protonated, and then this is basically the equivalent of water that came out in the other... Uh, type of this reaction that we looked at. So when we look at our original um, diagram here with water coming out, this is basically that OH- minus without uh, with the proton. The OH- minus is without it. So anyways, we can take this and we can do the reverse just like we did before. So this OH can come in here and displace that pi bond. We get this funny looking thing and we can go ahead and kick out our alkoxide anion. And then if we want, if there's like a water lying around nearby we can steal a proton from it. And then we can get OH minus and our alcohol. So I wanna look really quick at the biological significance of this. So in biology, the, the compound where this is relevant is lipids. So you'll have triglycerides or maybe a phospholipid and it's made out of glycerol, which is a three carbon alcohol. and three fatty acids. And these are gonna be like this. And these R's can all be different. And what's going to happen here is when these fatty acids get synthesized, you take out water and you make a bond. You take out water and you make a bond, and you take out water, and you make a bond. So then you have ester groups. And it happens by that same mechanism that I just showed. Depending on what environment you're in, it could be either one. So then when we have a triglyceride, if we want to hydrolyze it, we're going to get out of it glycerol and three fatty acids. And this is something you might see in biology questions.